Hey, welcome back to the show. Man, it was a great week for new comics. I've got a ton of reviews to do this week, and we're going to get it started right now with X-Men number two, Dawn of X by Hickman and you, today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome back. I'm Dan Shaheen. Today we're going to talk about... Uh, X-Men number two, Hickman and you, we've been loving, uh, we loved Powers of X and House of X, we've been liking Donna X okay so far, as expected, a bunch of spin-off X books by different writing teams are going to be of varying quality, what I'm sort of liking is their attempt to tie a continuity thread through all of them and try and make it work without it being explicit part one of this or part two of whatever, so uh, let's take. We're gonna take a look at this book today. Uh, this is my favorite of all the books. My favorite team for sure. I think you is a fantastic artist. I think this is Hickman writing at its best. But why am I gabbing about it? You know where we want to go. Straight to the million dollar comics cam. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> X Men number two on the million dollar comics cam. Um, we're going to start today in the Summer House, right? The X-Men uh, all get to make their own houses wherever they want. And since Krakoa can take you wherever you want, uh, Scott Summers built a house on the moon. The blue area of the moon, to be exact. And he's got his whole family living there. Including, you know, you want to talk about a complicated baby daddy situation. Let's talk about Scott Summers and Rachel Summers and Nathan Summers, right? alternate reality alternate timeline children from the future uh living together cyclops seems to take it all in stride and uh in this issue we get to see him try to play daddy uh so issue number two summoner the other island so apparently another island has appeared 100 miles off the coast of krakoa and krakoa uh, being a living mutant entity itself has started moving towards it and they are approaching each other. So the other island. Uh, mutants around the world are flocking to the nation of Krakoa to be part of the first mutant society. But since the assassination of Charles Xavier, see X-Force number one, their sense of safety has been shattered and the island is on lockdown. So, I mean, the last we saw, we saw a hole in the helmet of Professor X in the last issue of X-Force, X-Force number one. Apparently he's been assassinated, but, you know, mutants can be reincarnated, right? No problem. So who cares? I don't. Let's move on. Um, we get a lot of bantery, brothery, sistery, dad-type dialogue that's actually pretty good. You know, Hickman's not bad. He writes this stuff. It's pretty funny. Some of it's a little corny, but, man, I've read way worse, and, and, and it just adds a little something to the family atmosphere of the X-Men, like... X-Men is a big family anyway, and so these guys are literally family. And we get to see the the entity off the coast is this other island that uh, apparently is uh, has a volcano. Is this the other island of Araco uh, that's been mentioned in some of the previous text pieces and lore about Krakoa? N no, but yes, but sort of. Let's continue. Uh, they land on the island... They're checking it out. Uh, there's all kinds of crazy fauna on this island, including weird rhinos and giant crazy land squid things uh, that attack. And they get into a big fight, and we get to see some action happening. And then we cut to the Arak Maw, which I'm going to assume that means the maw, the open part of the volcano, sometimes called the caldera. It sure looks like they're in a volcano, so... I'm going to say this is the Arak Mall. And I think that's what this island is. It's like, it's Arak. It's not Araco. It's a, maybe a piece of Araco. We'll see. Anyway, we get introduced to this dude with this symbol, which means he's a summoner. But how do we know that? Well, we get one of these text pieces. And for Hickman, it's not enough to have a thing called a summoner, right? We got to have a summoner minor or a summoner adept and a high summoner, each of which have varying abilities to summon differing levels of demon. Apparently, this guy is our one and only high summoner left on Araco, and Araco's had better days. And he's sort of like a conduit to this 
otherworldly part of Arrakko, which has been sort of tied to like hell or limbo or something. We know that um, Apocalypse's original four horsemen were trapped there in Arrakko, and uh, that's going to play into what we see here. Uh, so, uh, more travels of the family and fun dialogue and, you know, family travel action. Not too bad. And they run into, uh, our old pal, the summoner, the high summoner, who, uh, we get a little bit of kooky comedy. Cable decides he's going to give him a gift. So he hands him a grenade as a gift not thinking that the guy might push the button and make it explode. They can't understand his sing-songy language. He doesn't understand their guttural grunts. But uh, finally, uh, Cyclops gets the idea that uh, they should connect her, the summoner, with Arako, And that's something that Rachel does with her mental powers. And then that allows them to communicate to each other. So, classic meet, fight, punch, make up with each other superhero type scenario. We've seen this stuff before. Um, so we can see that he's able to summon these different demons and beasts. And it appears like maybe a, Krakoa is more about flora and Arako is more about fauna, maybe. Um, because he seems to have control over these animal-type demon beings. Um, and then we can see finally they, they, they work out their misunderstandings and they're talking to each other. And uh, he's like... Uh, why are the islands moving towards each other? And he goes like, you know, do you love someone? What do you want to do? Uh, you want to be with them, right? So he's saying that these two, these islands are lovers and they're going to connect and they're going to get down with some island nookie. And that's what we see next as the islands little, literally merge into one. And we see our final text piece of the book, which is a map of Krakoa and Arak Coral. Okay, so that's what I guess this section is going to be called. Uh, the Arak Ma transit to Arako is closed. So apparently that's the gate to get you to the, the hellish dimension of Arako. Uh, here we get to see it in conjunction with the rest, the main, the main kind of X-Men action is going on over here. Uh, next we get to see, you know, the summoner just shows up on the island. He's like, I live here now. This is uh, my island and your island are the same island. And I lived here and you lived here. So we live here. And he runs off into the woods to meet up with who? With uh, good old Apocalypse. And Apocalypse reveals, spoiler alert, that apparently this summoner is the child of the original war of his original four horsemen who are trapped in Arako. And, uh, you know, he says, Apocalypse says, he's, I mean to save all of my children, those of Krakoa and those of Arako. And as we remember from a previous uh, Mr. Sinister little uh, clue thing, uh, Apocalypse really holds a lot of allegiance to his original horsemen. And if they return, will all bets be off with the current uh, mutant alliance? We'll see. Anyway, Krakoa is for all mutants. Coming soon. We're here we are at X-Men number two. Next, Excalibur number two, and the cycle continues. I'm going to continue reviewing these things uh, until I stop liking them. I'm pretty I'll stick with X-Men for a good long time. I'll stick with the spinoff books as long as they stay interesting and engage me. Oh, but what's coming next? Let's put on our Krakoa translation helmet. And, ah, Horde culture next so uh what does that mean i don't know is it a play on horticulture it's horde a culture horde culture we'll find out are you enjoying uh the all new dawn of x i know i am i was a little bit i wavered a little bit on uh excalibur x force okay but like it had such a cliffhanger we don't really know nothing has really happened in that book yet apparently we've been it's been spoiled that uh, uh xavier has been um assassinated but like i said before does that mean anything right is this new era of x-men right is it the dawn of x or is it maybe the uh, the yard of x 
because nobody can die. So where is the drama? I talk about this every episode. I think we're going to get an answer to that coming soon. I, 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 and I'm going to stick around to find out. Hey, speaking of sticking around, we got a lot more people who are watching these videos and a lot of you tend to stick around. If you like what I had to say about uh, this issue of X-Men, uh, stick around. We're going to review a lot of cool stuff this week, including Punisher Soviet number one. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, Fallen Angels number one, as well as uh, Punisher Soviet event leviathan maybe oh and and what i'm looking forward to the most the batman's grave number two so stick around hit the subscribe button hit the bell for notifications and uh thanks for hanging out and talking about comics we'll see you next time